What's up, everybody? Sunday Sessions, episode 37. Super excited to be here with y'all. The purpose of these calls is to deliver information to help you build your wholesale businesses, Amazon businesses, private label, e-commerce businesses, whatever type of business you're building to sell products to the end consumer. We're here to help you figure out solutions to your problem. So my name is Eric Castellano. I'm the owner and founder of Amazon Lit. I've been in the game for about a decade. I ship about 3 million orders a year. And the goal is to deliver tons of insights. So let's get right into it. Any questions you have, please ask away. More than grateful to answer any questions. So if this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Introduce yourself in the chat so we know who you are. Where's everybody chiming in from today? I'm over here in beautiful New Jersey. It's like 35 degrees outside. It was snowing a little bit last night, you know? So stay warm, especially if you're in those Northeast states and it's freezing. Oh, a couple updates before we get started here. So a few things in the pipeline. Number one, ASD. It's happening February 26th to March 1st in Las Vegas. I highly encourage you attend ASD if you're in the Amazon space, especially if you're looking to get into wholesale or already do wholesale. There'll be about a thousand vendors there. Even if only 10% of them are opportunities for you and your business based on geographical location, pricing on products, availability, that's still a hundred potential new vendors that you can meet with at ASD. So get your tickets to ASD, www.asdonline.com. It's absolutely free. I have no affiliation with ASD. I don't get paid to promote them. I promote them because it's a trade show that I've been going to for the past seven years, twice a year. Every year we do about five or $6 million in sales revenue. So I share it with all of you because I go, you should go. We there, you get the opportunity to meet with me in person. We can hang out, do some networking. You get to meet with other Amazon sellers. So it's a pretty special thing. The second update is if you're in eSellers or I currently, congratulations. I love having you in the community. We are working on 2.0. 2.0 is an update of 1.0, which dives deeper into the data, finding distributors, how to leverage discounts, and essentially how to grow your business in even more detail than you're currently growing it now. So uh, we'll be piecemealing that out as it's finished. Um, and the goal is in the next few months to have it fully updated. So we got a question over here on YouTube. Uh, what is the best software for wholesale? So I recommend three softwares. Actually, I'm going to recommend four. The first one you need to have for wholesale is Keepa. 100% unique people without a doubt. It's a no brainer. It's like 20 bucks a month. The second one will be a profit calculator. We like to use AZ Insight. Um, AZ Insight is a Chrome extension. It lives on the Amazon listing. You could see uh, your estimated profits, the estimated sales volume. You're also able to check out the different variations and see which variation is moving the the best based on customer feedback and reviews. You're also able to see the UPC, the ACID information. At the top of AC Insight, it lets you know if the item has any restrictions, if you need approval to sell it, if it's a hazmat, if it's enrolled in 2D transparency. There's also a small light calculator on AC Insight. So it's the move um, for us and for you as well. The third software you need is some sort of U UPC scraper. Um, if you're in inner circle, you're using source correct. Another great one we suggest is uh, scan unlimited tactical arbitrage has one as well. They're all very similar. And then the fourth and final must have for your Amazon business is a repricer, right? So you need a repricer. Our suggestions are re for repricers when you're selling around, you know, $10,000 or less in inventory or a pricer like be cool will suffice. Um, between ten and twenty-five thousand in monthly inventory, a repricer like GoAura will suffice. And then we suggest anything over that twenty-five thousand dollars a month, upgrading to a repricer that's more advanced, like SellerSnap. So SellerSnap's about uh, between two hundred fifty and five hundred dollars a month, depending on the size of your business. And we absolutely suggest leveraging it. You know, a lot of people are concerned to invest in higher-priced softwares for their business, but 
when you're talking about managing the pricing on your Amazon listings, you got to make sure you're partnering with the right repricer because the difference in a couple percentage points in daily buy box share could mean thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in lost or missed opportunities by using the wrong repricer. I have a question. Can we get a buy box on a higher price with the help of a repricer? So it's possible. You know, price point has a huge holds huge weight when Amazon's deciding the price or the buy box, who they're going to give the buy box to. So pricing is a huge, huge weight holder in that decision. So yes, it is possible to win at a higher price, uh, but most likely usually the person with the more competitive price is going to win the buy box. So Tech just said he ran his calculations on his production cost per ASIN. It's cost about $1.20 to get a product out the door. So for him, his minimum buying requirements is $3, which makes sense because if it's costing him $1.20 to get the product out the door and he's buying at a minimum profit of $3, you would assume that this gentleman would be making at minimum $1.80 in net profits on every single order he sells. Then it's just a matter of scaling it out. Set 10,000 orders a month times $1.80, that's $18,000 in net profits. You know, double that, $20,000 order a month, that's $36,000 in net profits. So you just keep scaling it like this. Daisy said, I saw you last year at ASD and I was paralyzed. But this year I will say hello and thank you so much for all your help. Please say what's up to me. Stop me, say what's up. I love me. You know, I love hanging out with you all. I love talking to you all and learning more about you. That's one of my main priorities in life is to meet as many people around the world as possible. So please don't be shy. Say what's up. Tap me on my shoulder. If I'm in a conversation, just wait a couple minutes and get my attention. I want to talk to you. Uh, yeah, we're going to AS or Expo West after ASD. We will be at Expo West. 100%. We'll be doing a walkthrough for Inner Circle and also a walkthrough for eSellers or I. Unfortunately, one of the, I guess it's not really a downside, but as Amazon like continues to grow bigger and bigger, we begin to help more people. You know, we had to be a little more restrictive about our events. So now like our trade show walkthroughs, they're only available to people who are already members of eSellers or I. It's a benefit of being part of our community. Right. Why would I offer it to someone who's not in our community when I can help the people who are already invested in themselves, who are already committed to be guided by us? Like those are the people I want to invest in. So the walkthroughs are exclusive to eSellers or I members. So if you're in the community, the post is pinned right at the top of the Facebook group. Um, I'm buying from a manufacturer direct now. The company is sort of like a far smaller Procter & Gamble. They use an inside sales company instead of their own sales rep. Is this something to worry about? So listen, if the pricing makes sense, then it's not something to worry about. But one thing I've experienced over the years is that usually when you go manufacture direct, they have much higher MOQs, usually around 10 to 20,000 pounds, which a purchase order is around 30 to five, thirty to $50,000 in MOQs. Um, and also normally their prices are more competitive than they are from distributors because they're distributing to distributors, right? So let's say their price for this mug is $5 in their manufacturer catalog at tier three pricing. You won't qualify for tier one pricing to get this mug at 425, but I promise you'll find some distributors who sell this mug for probably 450. So we like to circumnavigate manufacturers you know, companies like Procter & Gamble, Unilever, Reckitt Ben Kisser, some of these companies have been around since the late 1800s. They've been around for over a century. They're OGs in the game. You know, they're not giving exclusives to specific Amazon sellers. They're opening very little direct accounts unless you can meet their volume. But we purchase all their products from reputable distributors and wholesale accounts. Best category for beginners, any category you can make some money in, any category you're currently approved to sell in is the best category. All right, it's going to be different for every seller account. Um, some of our biggest categories, health and beauty, personal care, home and kitchen, grocery, those are some heavy hitters for us. So Tech News wants to know a little bit more about BGHL. So BGHL is on night two of ASD. It is in the evening, so it won't affect your trade show experience. You can still attend the trade show in the, in the morning, in the afternoon, meet with vendors, hang out with us, meet other Amazon sellers, and then around 5, 5.30 p.m., BGHL starts. It's in downtown Las Vegas. We fly in speakers from all over the world. I got Vanessa Hung coming to do account help presentation. We got the owners of Seller Snap 
I'm coming to talk about best repricing strategies. I'm in the works of getting some real estate professionals over there. So you know what to do with all the money you're making on Amazon, dump it into some properties. We also do our award ceremony. So in the past couple months, we shipped out over $17 million in awards to our community and East Sellers Arrive for monthly award achievements. So we bring you on stage. We recognize your achievement. It's an opportunity for everybody else to see what's possible. Because when you see a guy go on stage, you get a million dollar a month award and you're doing 50K a month. You're like, wow, I want to be that. Like, how, what do I got to do to to get that million dollar a month award, you know, and then we we reserve some time for networking, right? So it's a great place because ASD is massive. There's going to be hundreds of sellers there, but they're all spread apart, right? The, the event is massive. So what we do is we host an event to get all those Amazon sellers in one room. You know, we deliver presentations to help you grow your business. So for anybody who's going to ASD, you definitely want to lock in your BGHL ticket. The link is in our Instagram bio. Or you can go to eSellersRye.com slash BGHL and lock it in. It's about 65% sold out, so you don't want to wait too long. I see a lot of potential for suppliers on the East Coast. I'm from the West Coast. Do you think it's combined to buy from them? So, Anthony, you got to run the numbers if it makes sense. Um, so I rarely, I'm on the East Coast. I rarely buy from any vendors in, in California. It just doesn't make sense for me shipping. We placed a pretty large Christmas tree order um, from a vendor in, it was maybe, I think we got it like late September. We got it. It was like a $60,000 Christmas tree order. The shipping to us ended up costing $7,000. And then because it was oversized, we had to ship it again. And that was another $7,000. So just between shipping, we were already $14,000 out. And by the time we sold the trees and we analyzed returns, we actually didn't make a dime. We broke dead even on the Christmas trees, right? So you got to run the shipping numbers if you plan on um, shipping from for far locations. You got to run the numbers, right? And there's a few options when you're shipping from for further states out. You can set up the carrier shipment, right? A lot of these vendors have no problem you sending a truck to their facility, especially if you can get cheaper rates. So a lot of times I'll use a broker like unishippers.com and I'll shop negotiated rates to try to get a better price than the wholesaler quoted me in their expected shipping price, right? Because if you could get it down from a thousand bucks to 600 bucks using a carrier that you set up, that's huge savings. That's $400 in profits you're making right off the rip because you spent the time negotiating pricing. Um, yeah, we get tons of IP complaints. I would say we get a few a week. You know, it's part of the game. It's nothing to be scared about. As long as you're operating your, operating your business legitimately within Amazon's terms of service, there's no account health issue that can't be solved. There's no account health issue that can't be solved. Another huge benefit for being a part of e Sellers Rise, we offer a service. So if you do, if your account does get suspended, if you got an IP complaint you're co concerned about, you can just connect with us and you'll be able to jump on a phone call with Sebastian for a small service fee and he'll be able to troubleshoot the problem for you and get it solved immediately. Just to move. And just a heads up too, if like, if you're at a point in your business where I know a lot of you, you've been like, I've had phone calls with literally hundreds of you, right? I've talked to a lot of you personally. Um, a lot of you have joined the community. And the, the one thing I will say is, you know, as we update these sellers, right, the price point will go up, right? But one of the benefits of joining now is you get locked in. You get grandfathered into any future updates, right? So you can spend $3,000 now to join the community, or you can wait three months for when it's all updated and we bump up the price to $4,800, right? So you can get and start accessing it now, or you can pay, you know, 50% more. It's really the balls in your court. Either way, the value is still there. Um, whether it's you know, 3,000, 4,800, or even 10,000, the value is still there. Do you have an employee dedicated to account health in your company? Yes, I do. Her name's Shanice, she's amazing. If you were outside the US, is there a way we can hire a broker who can open up accounts with wholesalers or distributors? Why are you opening up accounts with wholesalers and distributors? Just because you're outside the US doesn't mean, mean anything. If you have a, a registered business inside the United States and you can provide a resale certificate and EIN information, it doesn't matter what country you're located in. Is it worth it to 
use private LTL carrier rather than Amazon a, a partner carrier? Absolutely, it's my preferred method. Usually Amazon partner carrier shipments take much longer to check into Amazon, um, but when you use a other carrier through that selection box, you have a little more control, usually because it's live unloaded. Right? And what that means is when you use Amazon partner carrier, sometimes they make 30 stops before they get it to their facility. And also because Amazon usually owns that truck, sometimes it sits in the parking lot for you know two to 10 days before they even unload it. But when you use other partner or other carrier, they do a live unload. So it's dropped off the day that it's delivered. You know, one thing you'll notice is I don't publicly advertise the, the program, right? It's like, we only let people into the community that I have a conversation with first. You know, it's not like you can't, I'm sure if you Googled it, you could find it, but I don't advertise for it on, on Instagram. I don't, there's no direct link to join, uh, but I can share it with you personally. Can I do wholesale and Amazon fulfillment completely or I have to have a warehouse? Yeah, you can leverage Amazon completely. Just keep in mind, it's gonna cut into your margins. Between using prep centers and Amazon prep services, it will cut into your margins, but there's a lot of people who sell on Amazon and they never touch or see the product and they primarily do Amazon wholesale. I just got off the phone call. Uh, Horatio, I had a call with him at 1145 this afternoon and he lives in Romania and he's selling on the US marketplace. Um, and he's currently doing $10,000 a month from Romania in the US, right? And his goal is to do $25,000 a month because that will allow him to quit his job. Right. So he's joining East Sellers Rye. And my goal is to help him do at least $25,000 a month to get started so he could quit his barbershop job and go all in on Amazon. That's the name of the game. What do you do with missing items? We have like four to five K in missing items. Some we can open investigations, submit invoice. Some we can. It says investigation. Um, is complete. How do we combat that? Yeah, so the ones that you could open investigations, you're going to want to open an investigation and submit the um, relevant documentation to support your request. Usually it's invoicing um, from the past 180 to 365 days that supports the amount of items that were purchased and sent on that shipment. Um, for the ones that are closed and investigation is complete, you will have to contact Amazon through a case log or a phone call to troubleshoot those issues. Hey, I saw that you have 15,000 plus ASINs with five stations. Do you think more ASINs e equals more scalability? So I think it's important to explain the vernacular I use when I talk in my business. So when I say ASINs, I mean fully completed products leaving our warehouse. So um, it's really only probably spread up across about 100 different products. Um, we consider ASINs fully packaged orders. So, and yes, I also agree that going wider on your SKU count is the name of the game to get more buy box priority, 100% without a doubt, especially if you're new and scaling, you're trying to grow your seller feedback, you're trying to get more opportunity, you're trying to build relationships with wholesalers and vendors. So purchasing a wider SKU count will allow you to grow those relationships and in turn, you'll get more buy box priority because if one day 50% of your listings aren't performing, the other 50% will be. How much would you start to pay your first employee? Well, your first employee should normally be a packer. And depending on what state you, you live in, a packer could be anywhere from, you know, 12 to $20 an hour. Obviously, if you're out in Cali, I'm talking closer to 12, uh, 20. And then if you live in maybe a Midwest state like Kansas, you could probably get away with 12. But also keep in mind that you want to pay your employees well, right? For employee retention, quality control, and growth opportunities. You know, I always believe that like paying minimum wage is not the way to build a business. You know, first of all, nobody can even live off minimum wage. It's ridiculous. Just hop in, anybody hop in Facebook right now and see how many people are selling like uh, a coffee mug for $4, pick up only, right? That really explains the state that a lot of people are in, you know, and that's not a good place to be in, you know, where you're selling coffee mugs for $4. It's just not a good place to be in. So like the goal is to learn skills that can allow you to build income and wealth for your future and your children's future or your family's future. Um, so I use whatever carriers are on uh, Unishippers, which for us, it's like Central Supply, Estes. Um, what's the new one that, that UPS is now called? I think like Freight First or something. Um, but, but the carrier you select is all going to be 
dependent on the location you are geographically in the country because um, some carriers have more competitive rates. Like I know for the Northeast, the most competitive carrier I use is Central Transport. Super competitive, very efficient. They they deal with a lot of Amazon shipments. Um, you know, but you're if you're in the Southwest, it might be different. Um, how do I scale from 100k to a million? So I'm assuming you're doing wholesale right now. You're going to need a few more suppliers to get to that a million mark. You're also going to need to begin leveraging your current suppliers. And when I say leveraging your current suppliers, that means asking about net terms, right? Net terms are essentially a loan on the inventory for anywhere from seven to 45 days normally. Um, that will allow you to really scale out your operation. Also branching into new new categories uh, will be huge for you as well. And being more efficient in your process. You know, something that a lot of people talk about all the time, which is great, is it's always like, how can I get the best discount? On a product, right? How can I get this product 10% off? How can I get this product 15% off? How can I get this product 17% off? Which is great. Don't get me wrong. You should continue to think like that. But what I don't hear anybody ever talking about, except for us, is what about the two percentage points you're losing in your inefficient buying process? Right. What about the three percentage points you're losing in your inefficient warehouse process? Right. What about the other two percentage points you're losing in your inefficient shipping process? That's what. Uh, what is that? Three plus two plus two, that's seven percentage points that you're losing on your gross and net margins because you're inefficient in your process. So the difference between a hundred thousand dollar a month business and a million dollar a month business is in your efficiencies. It's in your efficiencies because you can't do what you're doing to operate your hundred thousand dollar a month business and your million dollar a month business. The wheels will fall off. They'll fall apart. Um, what's our cost to prep a unit, including poly bags, labor, and labels? We're right around a dollar all in. Alicio.cast said he wants to do $20,000 a month. Uh, what would you suggest he needs to invest in inventory? $8,000. Your cost of goods will be about 40% of your sales revenue. Uh, J-Dub, if the supplier gives you net 30, will they typically let you pay the invoice with a credit card or will it be wire? Typically, it's ACH or wire transfer with the net terms. Um, but it depends on the supplier. There's definitely some suppliers that have no problem taking uh, CC payments. Eric, big fan from Southern California. How do you get best rates from your suppliers or high volume purchases and meeting MOQ enough? Uh, no, it's not enough. You know, everybody can do that. Anybody can literally place a high volume purchase and meet an MOQ. You're not special doing that. Um, you know, what's really going to set you apart is your relationship with them and your willingness to grow. So when I say willingness to grow, a lot of times something most people don't consider is you're always wondering about your company. But why don't you put yourself in their shoes and wonder about their company a little? So whipping up a quick little email. Hey, happy new year. I'm grateful for our relationship. We did whatever, $250,000 in purchases last year. I just wanted to check in and see if there's any products that you have access of that you need some help moving, right? Because now you've completely switched the entire conversation. And now they're like, wow, this guy, Eric, just reached out to me and he wanted to know what products we have too much of so he could take some of them on. And what we'll do is we'll buy those products, even if we're breaking even or making five percentage points, I'll buy them as security in the relationship. You know, so yeah, it might be a thousand bucks or even two thousand bucks you gotta spend, but now you got skin in the game. Another great way to grow these relationships, social trading and uh inc is go meet these vendors at the next trade show they're going to. Send all your vendors an email. Hey, it's E, just pop it in. Um, you know, this year I'm making it a commitment to go to five trade shows this year. I'd love to get a list of the trade shows you'll be attending so we can meet in person. I can take you out to lunch and we could discuss the future growth of our Amazon wholesale relationship, you know? So that sets yourself apart as well. Some of the best relationships I've had in the industry are companies that I've known for many years. You know, we've gone out to lunch together. We've gone to dinner. We've gone to parties. Um, I know I know how many kids they have. Right. Because it's no, it's no longer a business relationship. It's now switched to a personal and business relationship. I have a product. You answered your own question, Harry, saying I have a product selling at sixty nine ninety nine, but you're selling it at seventy four to get more margins. But Amazon is not sharing the buy box at seventy four. But I also see the last 30 days. Other sellers had buy box at seventy six. Should I wait? 
Uh, I have no idea, Harry, man. I have to look at the listing. Uh, but what I could tell you to do is pop it to Keepa, open up the buy box statistics, and they'll let you know who's dominating the buy box on that listing, right? And then you look at the current 30 days, you see who's winning the majority of the buy box, and then you got to be around their price point to win it. Um, you know, because if it's listed at $69.99 and you're at $74, of course you're not winning the buy box. You're $4 higher than the other competitive sellers. And if you don't have more feedback or a quicker shipping method, then what's Amazon's incentive to bump you in to the buy box? They have none, right? So what, what's something you should do, Harry, is analyze how much inventory is on the listing. So here's a hypothetical example. Let's say the listing has, or let's say the listing sells a thousand units per month, right? The person with the, with the buy box has 4,000 units in stock. So essentially they have four months of inventory, right? That's too aggressive for me. I'm not willing to wait four months for that company to sell out their inventory. So in that specific case, because I'm not willing to wait four months to get a return on my investment, um, a profitable return, let alone just a break even return, what I'll do is drop price, move out that inventory, bring back the cash flow. But if you're looking at that listing and it sells a thousand units per month and the guy in the buy box only has seven units, you know, a thousand divided by 30 is what? 33 items a day approximately. So essentially by tomorrow, that person will be sold out. And then you could jump in and dominate the buy box on that listing, you know? And that's it. Listen, Harry, that's a great question, man, because this is where a lot of people get confused. And this is like the purpose of being a part of a community is because we break all this down for you. You know, one of the most important jobs you'll do in your Amazon business is buying inventory. It's the most crucial, most important job in your entire company. If you're not buying profitable inventory, it doesn't matter how efficient your prep is, how cheap your shipping is. You know, how competitive you could be, it doesn't matter. If you're not buying inventory that's going to sell, you're going to continue to fail and fail and fail over and over again. Yeah, so Nick just asked, uh, how do you create systems for inbound inventory to creating a shipment plan to prep? It's getting very confusing with a ton of SKUs on in shipment. Yeah, Nick, Amazon didn't make it any better now that you, you know, you have to have the, the information for the product before creating the shipment. Um, so what we do is, uh, we know what products are coming in, right? And then based on what's expected, we're adding them to a shipment in, in advanced and then making changes as it's received, um, which explained, it's not very informative now that I'm listening to myself say it, but it's also, it's it's almost a too complicated process to explain uh, verbally. It'd be best to, I guess, really do a whole separate video on, managing your inbound inventory and creating those shipments because it's a problem a lot of people are experiencing now and now that amazon's eliminated the access to their back-end api to update these shipments it's making it even more complicated you know but we're in the process of working on a streamlined efficient uh, solution for it um you know it's currently changing as the system changes so as soon as we find something that works efficiently we will share it with the detailers or our community um, what's your lowest buy box item and highest buy box product? I would assume you, you're talking about percentage. Um, so I would say 1% is the lowest and 100% is the highest. You know, I have a few SKUs that we dominate 100% of the buy box on because we're exclusive with the, with the brands. We also have a few SKUs that are private label that we dominate the 100% of the buy box on. You know, and then there's some SKUs that maybe say $10,000, 10,000 units a month. And we're only getting 1%, but that 1% is close to 100 orders, so we're cool with it. Do you think it's necessary to have a website for visual purpose? Yeah, it can't hurt. You just want to make sure that you're not using it to essentially dupe the company into thinking that you're only going to be selling on, on Amazon. Listen, I didn't become one of the largest wholesale Amazon companies in the world by manipulating brands and companies to do business with me. And usually when you create a website, that's your goal. Right. Let's just be fully transparent with each other. Your goal is to manipulate a company into thinking you're going to be selling it on your website when you're going to take it out the back door, sell it on Amazon. I don't operate businesses like that. It's not, it's not good for long term growth. Yeah, you might be able to make a quick thousand dollars, but. 
you know, what's that really going to do for you in the long run? It's going to get your account shut down. They're going to figure out you're selling on Amazon. Now, if you need a website because they say, hey, I have no problem if you sell it on Amazon, but I'd also like you to list it on your website, then you can add some inventory to your website. But if your sole purpose of the website is to manipulate brands into opening accounts for you so you can backdoor their products on Amazon, then you have your priorities mixed up. And that's not a long-term business model. That's a short-term business model.